Our speaker is Nikita Kalinin, and he will speak about trends in sandpile problem and sandpile model. Are you ready to start? Yeah, I'm ready to start. So thank you for the possibility to speak here. Uh, is, there, is there anybody here except you? Yes, we are. Ah, okay, great, great. Fine. So I have 30 minutes and I will mainly present uh, the motivation to study SendPile model. And also I discuss some open questions about it. First, first of all, I should mention uh, the main literature about it. Uh, so if you just want to learn something about uh, sand pile models, then definitely start from the paper of Thar, theoretical study of self-organized physicality. And that's quite old paper. I think it's like 2000 something, 2003. But uh, uh, it contains all the basic material about it. Then I should mention that from point of view now, there are uh, direction in sand pile models now. Uh, that's a topic uh, of tropical curves in sand piles. Later, I will explain what does it mean. Uh, me, Nikita Kalin, and my co-author, Mikhail Shkolnikov. So we we are doing some work here. Also, very interesting uh, direction. Uh, that's about Apollonian patterns in sand piles, and here there are several works with great uh, progress, and the names here are Smart, Levin, and Pesden. And also one of the recent directions is Abelian networks, and that's uh, uh, the main author is Levin and his co-authors. So that's about region, and now I can start by defining uh, the model. And then I will explain the picture at some point of my talk. So let's start the definition. Let's consider a graph. G is a finite connected graph with things. So for example, something like that. So you have a square. And then you say that some vertices here, well, these, these are things. Okay, then uh, a state of a sand pile is a function from g to z bigger than zero. And here by g, I mean the vertices. So for example, a state can be something like this. So here I have zero, one, two, three, five, two, zero, zero, one, one, three, two, 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 two for example. Okay, so that's a state. This is a state of a sand pile model. The main definition, I think, is a definition of a top link. So if phi of v bigger than degree of v. By degree, I mean the number of connected edges coming to this vertex, the number of edges. Then we may perform a toppling at v. It means that we produce a new state by the following rule. So uh, f phi prime of v equals phi prime phi of v minus the degree of v, phi prime of w equals phi prime plus one. If w is connected to v by an edge, so here by this I denote the fact that w is a neighbor of v and phi prime of u equals phi of u otherwise. So you should think that sandpile model, a state, uh, it 
uh, denotes the number of grains of sand at each vertex. So for example, here you have one grain, here you have zero grains, and so on. And a toppling is uh, it's when this grain topples, uh, when this grain distributes to the neighbor vertices. For example, here I have five. And five is bigger than the degree of this vertex, which is four. It means that I can perform topping here, and topping it uh, subtracts four grains from here and gives plus one to all the neighbors. Okay, so you can think that it's kind of communism rule. So if a person has a lot of uh, sand grains, then uh, it gives one of the grain to each of the neighbors. So in this case, I will draw the state after that. So five became just one, two became three, two became three, two became three, and three became four. Okay. And uh, also, I should add one more rule that we cannot, we are not allowed to perform toppings at sinks. So here in this red vertices, here. We are not allowed to perform toppings. Uh, you can think that all sand which falls into the things disappear from the system. Okay, and then uh, two claims, which are kind of obvious, and let's say the exercises. Exercise one. Uh, okay, one more definition. A definition. Uh, relaxation is uh, doing toppings while it is possible. So until there are vertices uh, with number of grains at least their degree, we may perform topping. And the exercise one is that any relaxation terminates. So the question to the audience, uh, uh, is it clear? Could somebody uh, tell me that it's clear? Well, for me, it's clear. Okay, anybody else? Yes, it's clear. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, great. Then the next exercise, which is a bit more interesting. Uh, I want to say that the result of relaxation does not depend on the toplings we perform. So the result of the relaxation of a relaxation of phi is well defined. Here I mean that it doesn't matter in which order you perform toppings uh, at all. Uh, when you reached the stable state, meaning that uh, you can't perform any more toppings, this stable state is the same for any relaxation. Uh, so how to prove it? Uh, basically, you should consider two sequence, two sequences of uh, vertices, which you, where you perform uh, toplings, and then you should prove that you can uh, exchange the vertices where you perform toppings. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, this is exactly the property uh, which gives the name abelian sand pile. 
just abelian sandpile model. So this property guarantees that, uh, for example, if you start with some state, then you add some number of grains, you perform relaxation, you add more grains, you perform relaxation. It is the same if you add all these grains at first and then perform relaxation. Uh, any questions about this uh, exercise too, or is it clear? It's a bit it more doesn't elaborate. seem clear. It, it doesn't. Okay. Simpler than the first one. Uh, do you want that I, I give you a solution? Uh, uh, is there a um, uh, diamond lemma here? Uh, what is diamond <laughs> lemma? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, diamond lemma. So, uh, and what is the diamond lemma? I, I, I don't know. Um, diamond lemma means if you go uh, two ways, uh, then they sh uh, sh uh, should have uh, a, uh, a common descendant. Mm, so, if you have, if you have uh, no, he, here it means that if you start with five then you go whenever you want you always terminate in just one state so all the passes going down they come to the same state final so that the result does not depend on the process okay let, 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 let me give you the explanation so explanation So let's Can consider just, uh, exchange? Uh, oh, sorry. two relaxation. Yeah, yeah, sure. Exactly. That, that's that's exactly. That Can we just change, exchange uh, two, uh, two vertices? And that's all. N not not quite, uh, because I mean, sometimes uh, top links they provoke another links. For example, if you perform top link at this three, it provokes okay. top link at this three, which became four. So it's not okay, that how just to exchange say, them. Uh, Two non, I know, non-stable vertices. That uh, if you can, uh, you have two operation, one after another, then you can exchange them always. Yes, yes, that's, that's true, but that's yeah, not, then, not enough. I mean, okay, the statement. Okay, okay. So let, let me just say a few more words about it. And it's not that, that difficult. So consider uh, two relaxation sequences of the same state. Example V1, etc. VM and W1, etc. So uh, we may suppose that V1 is not the same as w, W1 because otherwise we uh, cut the first step and then use induction. Okay, so if they're not the same, uh, uh, it means that on the first uh, position on phi uh, v1 uh, was unstable it means that it contained uh, the number of grains was bigger or equal than its degree it means that somewhere here uh, we also should have to topple it right so there exists i such that v1 is equal to wi but then it means that you can exchange this vi with v1 because if you can topple vi at some point here it means and you, you could topple from the very beginning because it's the same as v1 then you can transpose it one by one to the first position then you contract and then use induction so it's basically that the fact that you can exchange to unstable process but a bit more elaborate Okay, so more questions here because these are some basic facts and uh, if you miss something here, it's bad. Okay, that's fine. So uh, this is a billion and part. This is a billion property and that's exactly this direction 
about abelian networks. Abelian networks, these are a study of uh, networks where you have a graph and then some nodes can perform operations and send messages to the neighbors. And then neighbors perform some operation and send messages to their neighbors and so on. So it's basically the same as neural networks. And abelian networks, these are exactly those networks when you, can, you say that the result does not depend on the order of the operations. So uh, you may uh, compute messages at this vertex, then at this vertex, and so on. And that's, I think, it's, it's very interesting. Because then you can ask questions about computability and other stuff. OK, so now let's go to main send file problems. Uh, consider the set of stable states. Stable means that phi of v is at most degree of v minus 1. And then you can define uh, addition. If you have states phi and psi, you say that consider phi plus psi relaxed and this is a point wise. So you just add two states point by point and then you perform the relaxation. And then you, it's easy to see that it's associative, for example. Computers are associative. And uh, also the set of all stable states uh, is finite. So this is called a uh, monoid. Set with operation commutative and associative. And then uh, by pure algebra, uh, there is a group inside of it. This is a group. Uh, basically, just the intersection of all ideals. And this group is called the sent pile group. And there's another characterization of this group uh, that uh, you consider uh, all recurrent state definition. A state i is recurrent if phi is equal to the state which is a denote by degree of v minus one plus something relaxed. So uh, my main example will be just a square lattice. And for example, I say the uh, boundary is a thing. And then I can consider the maximum stable state, uh, which is uh, at every vertex, I put degree of this vertex minus one. So in my case, I put three everywhere. These are the ma maximum stable state, which I denote like that. And you see that a state is recurrent if it can be abstained from the maximum stable state plus some grains somewhere and then relaxed. And it happened that this sent pile group is exactly the set of all recurrent states. Sent pile group. So another definition of recurrent state is as follows. So let's consider the following dynamic. You start with any state, you add grain uniformly to some of the verses, you, you perform the relaxation. Then again, you uh, choose a vertex randomly, add a grain, perform a relaxation. So that's a discrete dynamic. And a state is called recurrent 
appears in this dynamic uh, with non-zero probability far away from the start of the dynamic. So for any given n with some non-zero uh, probability, it appears after the step of n. Okay, so these are three three definitions of uh, sent pile group. First definition is uh, uh, this sent pile the group inside a commutative monoid. The second definition is a set of states of such a presentation, and the third is a set of states which appear in this dynamic uh, infinitely far from zero. Questions here. Can I ask one question? Sure. Uh, so I have probably a stupid question. Uh, so I'm not a specialist in algebra, uh, but I know that if we have a monoid, then we can create a group you, you, using, I don't know, Rotendik uh, uh, construction, Rotendik group. So mm -hmm. like in an abstract way. And uh, mm -hmm. what uh, does it give? here like this construction so it's the same or it, it will be a different group uh, so uh, this sent pile group is smaller than the monoid so, so here you had a monoid yep yeah and sent pile group is inside of it small small part of it so what you're talking about is, is the opposite way so you add you add subtractions Yes, yeah, and I add a subtraction created like in uh, kind of. Uh, no, no I, I don't know any good description of the answer in this uh, model, but I can tell you uh, other things. So, another presentation of this abelian group is as follows. So, this sent pile group is the same as z power number of vertices modulus some lattice. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, uh, uh, one of the possible ways to study this group is to say that uh, you have a vertex which is generated basically by the topping operations. So, mm -hmm. for example, uh, one of the works is this lattice, it can be minus four, one, 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 and zero uh, otherwise. So, a vector is a number of grains of every vertex, and uh, also we have such vectors. Which corresponds to the toppling, and these vectors they generate lattice. And if you factor z power g by this lattice, you have exactly this sent pile group. So uh, another description, one more description. Let's say that two states are equivalent if they can be connected by the sequence by a sequence of topplings and inverse operations. Then the set of equivalence classes that's again exactly the sent pile group. But uh, do you know what is this like? Uh, let's say uh, imaginary sent pile group when we, I mean, when we use this pretendic uh, procedure. So do you know what is it, or just like? Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm not aware about uh, about it. Okay. It's the first time I hear about it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So. <laughs> this group, yeah. Excuse me. Now, now I worry a, a little bit about uh, um, exercise one. So on the torus, uh, on the torus, it's definitely not true. So, uh, so please uh, tell me, uh, uh, tell me uh, where do do we sh should we use planarity, um, planarity in exercise one? It's not so, about planarity. That's about things. So you should have some things in your graph. Where you prohibit to make toppings. Okay. That's kind of holes, and all sand which uh, falls there disappears. And if you have a torus, also, uh, let's say, uh, you should have some, you should distinguish some vertices. You should say that they're, they're things. Oh, okay. Then, then, then I understand. Of course, of course, of course. So, so it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And now I have five minutes and I tell you the most interesting problem about sand piles. That's exactly the problem of the identity of the sand pile group. Right? If you have a group, it's natural to look at the identity of this group. The first idea of identity could 
basically that it's just a state which is zero as of, as, uh, everywhere, right? Because when you add uh, a state to zero everywhere, you have the same state. So it seems that when you add just empty state to anything, that's a neutral operation. But the problem here is that the total zero is not a recurrent state. So the total zero does not belong to this group. And it happens that you can draw this uh, uh, identity, for example, the big square, and that's, that's it. So that's the identity. The identity. Right. So here I have something like a square of size 100, and I say that the, uh, the things are the boundary. So here is all things. And that's uh, identity. So here it's two. This is three. Red is zero. And yellow is one. And nobody can prove it. So that's open problem. How to prove that the identity for the square, that sent pile identity for square looks like that. Nobody can prove that it has a big square of two inside. Okay, and I think that's the main problem in sent piles. Uh, so what about the progress in this direction? First of all, here you can see some thin graphs. here and here and if you heard the words tropical geometry then you know that they look like tropical curves that's exactly the uh, this direction where we have some results with my quarter so this part we can explain this linear balanced graphs also if you look at patches you can see you see that they are very uh, similar. So you have this uh, structure like uh, Sierpinski triangles. And for each such a part, you have some distinct uh, patterns. And also these patterns, they have complete description. That's, that's, that's about uh, Apollonian packings. So there is a full description of all parts of this picture. So we know how to describe the uh, curves, we know how to describe these patches, but still nobody can prove that identity looks like that. Uh, okay, and also I can show you some uh, short uh, uh, simulation of this sand pile uh, where we obtain tropical curves. Let me share the screen. Okay. Good. So let me draw the picture. So here I start with a uh, square. It means that I start with a square, my graph is a square. And at every vertex, I have three grains. And white means three. Then I add somewhere just one grain. It becomes four. And then it provokes stopping. And then it provokes stopping to the neighbors. So it looks like that. And it's very peculiar that after the relaxation, we have again three almost everywhere, except this uh, small balanced graph. And then I can, can add more points, and always I will have such a graph passing through the places where I, I add uh, grades. And so in, in this picture, you, you see the same linear patterns as you have seen on the, ident uh, on the picture for identity. So and for this setup, we know how to prove everything. So. Uh, that is what I meant when I say that we understand the, uh, the tropical, tropical curves uh, in St. Pile models. 
Okay, and uh, what about these quadratic patches? Uh, that's a similar simulation. You can start with empty plane, then add one million grains at one point and perform relaxation. In this setup, again, you can describe the whole picture and this picture will have exactly the same patterns uh, as, uh, as you see here. So in this sense, all these parts of this picture, they are known from other, a, a bit different setups, and they understood in this sense, but it's not clear why they appear here. Okay, I think that's, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the talk. Any questions? Thank you, Nikita. Mm -hmm. I, I have one question, one more question. Can I uh, ask it? So, I mean, uh, you, it's kind of the model for some uh, real physical process, yes? The, the hope is. But, uh, Not quite. Okay, but then uh, probably do you know, uh, are you aware of some real uh, process that somehow approximates this behavior of uh, Sand piles. Oh, uh, I would say that we can write you know, partial differential equations that, uh, at least in some cases, approximates uh, the, whatever it means, uh, the behavior of sand piles. Uh, let's tell the story how it uh, became popular. Uh, so, physicists uh, back then, at Wiesenfeld, they studied self organized criticality and then they come up with this model. So this is, this is the model, the basic model of self-organized criticality. Uh, basically of any behavior when you have some scaling invariance or power laws and so on. So in a sense, uh, this <laughs> model is underlying all these physical processes. So if you just open this uh, paper where this model was in introduced, it has, I think, about like 10,000 citations. So it's mm -hmm. from the physical point of view, it's not to explain something, but it's kind of you know the uh, the basic model for <laughs> for self-organized criticality. And what about sand? Uh, if you have the same model but in one dimension, then indeed it looks like a, a pile of sand. So you have something like that. And then when sand falls, because it's uh, very steep here, then you can say that it's the same model. But starting from two dimensions, it's definitely not about the physical world at all. And concerning the question about differential equations, uh, the main problem here is that uh, all the states, they have uh, the integers. I mean that the values of all the states at each vertex is an integer number. And because of that, we have all this uh, beautiful behavior, fractals and so on. If you say that the value are not necessary integer, but any, anyone, so you, you have not so great pictures. You have either some chaos or some very simple uh, pictures. So it's very difficult to apply differential equations here. Thank you. I wanted to ask one question also. Um, so how different it is for different graphs and uh, in general other graphs for which uh, uh, say uh, some of the problems that you talked about are under identity? Yes, uh, yes. You, you can consider some part, some graphs like, you know, like cycles, like graphs for simple algebra or some modifications. You also can consider some random graphs, for example. There is a nice result that if you consider a random graph, I mean that you, you draw an edge randomly, then you can find the probability of the uh, components of this abelian group. So this abelian group, uh, it's a direct sum of z by pz. And you can find the number of components of such type, so for the, the probability for, for a random graph. Uh, but uh, apart from some standard simple graphs like cycles, I don't know, cycles with one edge is not much known. So the identity problem, for example, is not understood for uh, for any large class of graphs, like large class of sufficiently no, complex no, graphs. No, 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 not at all. 
And do you get fractals? Uh, so, uh, how, how, how? So, so, so sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you want to say? Uh, I wanted to say that uh, for just a random graph, it's not clear how to pose a problem. For example, it's natural to pose such problem for Kelly graphs. Then you can, you know, you have something like like a square, like a polygons. But for just some class of graph, it's not clear in which terms you like to describe the identity. Yes, you have some state, oh, okay, so. <laughs> Here, uh, it's clear that all the pictures are scale invariant. It means that if I increase the size of my square in 100 times, the picture will be the same. And then you can state some meaningful theorem. But okay, so under some limit, we have a you know, well-defined limit. But for just usual graph, you how to ask. For graphs, questions. there are also, uh, I guess, some uh, things like graph fonts, or I don't know. Uh, I mean, the, the, there are ways of defining limits, I guess, for, for normal graphs. For, for normal, like, big yeah, classes yeah, yes, of but graphs. I but think it's, it's widely open. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, another thing is how uh, how much is it affected by the choice of the sinks? Also, I guess it's affected a lot, but um, would it make sense to I don't know what would happen if you have only say two sets opposite sides of the square being sinks instead of all of them? Then uh, yeah, so if it's only opposite sides, it's the picture is much simpler, but still it's open. <laughs> okay. And if you have things somewhere inside of here, then the picture is much more difficult and uh, much less hope how to prove it. What can be simpler than a square? Hexagon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, the question is how it depends on the lattice. Uh, because some things are known for any lattice, and uh, this Apollonian packings are known only for square lattice. So if you consider hexagons, uh, it's not that easy. I think also it's unknown. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's very interesting. Thank you.